Hey, how's it going, Captains? Admiral Tori here, and welcome aboard for another World of Warships video on my channel. In today's video, I am sailing the Tier 10 French battleship, the Republique. I think that's how you pronounce it in French. I know for a fact that I don't speak French, so I'm just going to refer to the English translated name of Republic. So recently, I decided to exchange my Midway for free XP. And the reason why was because I rarely play the tier 10 aircraft carriers. Same reason as I said in my Hakuryu and Wusta video where I discussed that, hey, I only play tier 8 CVs, why not exchange these two aircraft carriers for free XP, which is very valuable because it's a lot more difficult to get that free XP without using the credit card, of course, versus just getting regular XP. So since I'm playing the Shokaku and Lexington more often compared to my Midway and Hakuryu, get the free XP from those two ships and pick something that I always wanted to get. And the ship that I pick, for this case, as you can tell, is the Republic. I always wanted to play the Republic. The only problem was me being determined to play the Alsace. Now, I talked about this in my Alsace video. I believe that the Alsace can be a fun ship at time, but most of the time, I'm always fighting with the ship's dispersion and the gun caliber, which is frustrating for me, uh, it's not to say that the Alsace is a horrible ship. I've seen people talk about how the Alsace, even though in its current state of being nerfed since the original version, people still love the ship to death. And I still kept my Alsace because I think she is a badass looking ship from time to time, especially when you have three quadruple turrets. So Republic. The Republic is an interesting ship. Um, I only played 10 games so far, and right away, just in 10 games, the Republic has become my best ship in the world of Warships, which is a big statement, because to put in perspective, the second game, which is the one you're watching right now, this is the second time I played the Republic, I broke my long time damage record of roughly 260,000 damage. This game just did it on a second try. And I said to myself, maybe it just so happened that I got lucky. But after playing 10 games, another game, which I unfortunately didn't record because what are the odds of that one game that I decided not to record and it turned out to be my best damage game. I did 319,000, almost 320,000 if you round it up on the map hotspot and I didn't record it, which is depressing because the gameplay that I should showcase is that game. But yeah, breaking my damage record twice in 10 games really does speak out a lot for me. So what makes the Republic powerful, at least for me? Let's start off with the problems with the Republic because I think I can really, you know, talk about the greatness of the Republic for the rest of the video. Let's just point out the obvious things that I didn't like about the Republic, or more specifically, the flaws with the Republic to keep her balanced, if I put it that way. Of course, every ship that I play, there's got to be some sort of flaw. So the biggest flaw with the Republic is that the best way to describe it, she is a Royal Navy battleship in terms of survivability without the super repair party. So if you play the Royal Navy battleships at tier nine to tier 10 and own the Nelson, you know what I'm talking about. Even with the regular Royal Navy battleships like the Queen Elizabeth, they have a bo above average repair party that they repair more of the ship when they take HE, fire, and even flood damage compared to the other nations. That is the cork. The French has that particular cork because majority of the ship is plated with 32 millimeters. So 303 millimeter guns can penetrate your armor. Uh, guns are 152 or 155 with IFHE can penetrate your ship. And if you see me face something like a Des Moines, a Wooster with some serious IFHE or any 
pretty much any cruiser in the high tier, you're, you're just going to get ripped apart in the Royal Navy battleship and the French battleship. So how is it possible for this ship being this squishy to be effective? Well, it's the guns. The guns are the selling point on the Republic, and for whatever reason, I don't see Republics that often at the NA server. Um, probably because it's North America, so most people who are Americans, they're going to be more focused on the American line versus the European and the Japanese. So yeah, it's probably going to be different in the European server, the EU. I'm sure that there's plenty of French players out there who always wanted to get these crazy looking French battleship and the Republic is a well-deserved ship to unlock in your port because she's that strong to me at least. So the guns, these are 431 millimeter guns, 50 caliber, and the catch here is that it reloads very quick. I mean, yeah, you got the Yamato's 406 millimeter guns, you got Montana's 406, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of firepower at tier 10. But what separates the Republic from the other ships is that the reload rate. Now the Republic has a similar dispersion behavior with the Kerfers. But the difference between the Kerfers and the Republic, which prevents the Republic from feeling like a shotgun compared to the Kerfers, is the Sigma. You see, the Kerfers has a, a, a 1.8 Sigma, and that's normal. That is average Sigma at you know high tiers. I expect 1.8 and no lower, unless you're talking about the Alsace, which is one of the problems I have with the Alsace. But although she doesn't have dispersion like the Japanese, so if we were to compare the Republic to the Yamato, it just so happens that the Republic max range is equal to the Yamato, which gives me an idea of the dispersion value. In the case of the Yamato, I don't know the exact number at the top of my head, but the Yamato with the dispersion upgrade for the modification, she roughly lands around 270 meters max dispersion at 26 kilometers. Republic with the dispersion uh, upgrade, the, the accuracy upgrade to reduce the dispersion, is 299 meters. So clearly the Republic doesn't have better dispersion than the Yamato, which is why I, I believe that the, the dispersion on the Republic is more similar to the Kerfers. And I do get those moments at times where the dispersion feels really bad on the Republic. But if you want to make the Republic accurate, it's all about the Sigma. You have to abuse the Sigma. How do you abuse the Sigma? Well, Sigma is just, a, a, a way to calculate the consistency of the guns. You can have great dispersion, but bad Sigma, uh, which results in times where when you hit that lucky RNG roll because your small Sigma just so happens to hit it, then you get that really tight dispersion. But if you don't get good Sigma, then most of the time you're gonna get really bad um, dispersion or poor consistency. In the case of Republic, she has a two point of Sigma. And in order to get that, you know, that tight dispersion, you, you gotta keep trying. And how do you keep trying? Well, you gotta put down more uh, more shells down range, basically. That is the trick to getting um, that, um, that Sigma, that accuracy. Uh, this is what happens with when I play the American cruisers, because the American heavy cruiser, especially with the Des Moines, which has a high rate of fire, at times the Des Moines has really crappy dispersion. But what makes it accurate for other times is because I, I just keep keep putting down the the shells down range just keep letting it rip with the guns and eventually you're going to get those really nice on um, tight salvos from time to time so for the republic you have to keep firing and in this case 431 millimeter guns a caliber above 406 millimeter at this tier averages the reload rate without the upgrades is 30 seconds and you if you want to talk about like the curfers 400 and 20 millimeters, I believe, it reloads at 32 seconds. Republic, whose guns are bigger than the Montanas, whose guns are bigger than the, uh, the Kerfers, reloads at an alarming rate of 21 seconds with the upgrade, the, the main battery upgrade, of course, 21.3 seconds. And it, it reloads even faster than the 380 millimeter guns you find on the Bismarck. Put, let that sink in for a second. You got big guns 
good sigma, and a crazy reload rate. This thing is basically a Sharn horse with big guns, and the guns are arranged in the fashion as the Gascogne. Yeah, let that sink in. And the way I make it work is, as you notice, is that I want to maintain this ship health pool below 40% and above hopefully 20% because you want to have some room just in case if a battleship does happen to knock you out with a really big salvo. So with that in mind, I average the reload rate once I get low enough, as you notice that I don't right away use my repair party, to 15 seconds. 15 seconds, let, let, let that thing, let that sink in for you, just think about it. 15 seconds, 431 millimeter guns, you got eight of them. And you got ships at this tier that are big, easy targets. You got big Citadel cruisers because they're massive, like the Moskova, the Des Moines. Yeah, this, it's abusive. And that is how I was able to make the Republic work. It's just constantly putting pressure. In the Montana, in the Yamato, when a battleship turns, you can only get one really good broadside salvo. One broadside. In the Republic, I can pull off almost two full broadside salvos. Almost two. Which kind of gives you an idea, because, for instance, when I was facing a Moskova, Moskova was angled, I fired once, and then she thought to herself, hey, I no, actually it's not Moskova, it's a Stalingrad. Uh, well, it doesn't matter, but... The Stalingrad thought she can get away with it because naturally you would think that, okay, a battleship just fired recently, it's coming right at me, I angle, and start turning. But what she doesn't realize is that I was low, and I had the main battery reload with the adrenaline rush. I forgot to mention that you need adrenaline rush. I think that's pretty standard for ships that are dependent on their guns at this tier, so if you reach tier 10, you should know that adrenaline rush is a must-have. As a result, the Stalingrad didn't expect me to fire a full broadside salvo on her broadside. Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty nasty. Now, of course, you might be wondering why am I playing all the way in the back? Well, yeah, remember the flaw with the Republic that I spent a good solid five minutes talking about? You're really forced to be a mid-range to long-range, um, you know, battleship. There's just really nothing you can do about it. Of course, there's going to be someone out there say that, what are you doing? You're, you're playing too passive. Well, the difference between playing passive and not having a battleship on your team because they decide to charge in, knowing for a fact that your battleship is going to get withered to death, uh, yeah, I kind of prefer at least having a battleship alive. Now, if I'm in the curve first, that is a whole nother story, but I am not in the curve first. I am in the Republic. So what I'm trying to do here is that, hey, my team is at the A flag and they're not really pushing up while the enemy team is right in front of me. Of course, if I charge in, I'm going to die for sure, especially against curve for secondaries because remember, my my armor is 32 millimeters and a lot of the curve for secondaries, especially with IFHE, can really pen my, my armor. So I'm going to take a lot of damage. Not only that, being a tier 10 battleship, I have a massive citadel. Well, I, I mean, a massive superstructure. Uh, yeah, of course, I do have a massive citadel, but the citadel is fairly well placed. So, although, you know, I could go in, I shouldn't go in. Uh, I think the other question people might ask is that, should you build the Republic with secondary build? Certainly not going to stop anyone from doing that, because the Republic does have a base range of 8 kilometers on secondaries. Uh, if you grab IFHE and all the secondary stuff, you can really make the Republic work. But to be fully effective, in my opinion, you want to go spec for the damage control type of stuff, like anti-fire and concealment and the guns. Why do I don't go for a secondary build? Well, if we, even if we live in a world where people decide to go full on secondary and secondary is a viable choice, again, 32 millimeter of armor. Kerfers can do it because she got very thick bow armor. She has like 60 uh, millimeter. Her deck armor is like 50 some millimeter. She got thick armor to take, uh, to withstand uh, the punishment. But in the case of the Republic, you, you just can't. So the selling point is the guns, always the guns, and you gotta make use of it. So it, like I said, I'm trying to maintain a low HP without using my repair party right away. At the same time, I decided to go on this side of the map, even though it's way out of the, um, the battle zone where the flags are at. 
is because the midway is right here. I don't want to lose the midway. Whether the midway player is bad or not, him being able to fly planes around is going to be very useful as you will see because just flying planes around allows me to spot certain targets that I won't be able to spot because the only destroyer we have left is the Kitakaze. Now the Kitakaze isn't a destroyer to use to spot because it's a very slow destroyer and it's a large destroyer. So if I lose the Kitakaze, it's going to be a prompt. But the Midway is a valuable asset. So the Kerferis head was taken out by the Midway and now I'm left with the Massachusetts. Now Massachusetts, for some sort of reason, decided to sell broadside and right at that moment, my massive guns paddle him super hard. Uh, as you notice, one Citadel and three massive penetration, I believe, which led to 30,000 damage. So I'm maintaining the angle. Um, I should maintain a better angle, but I'm feeling very confident that the Massachusetts doesn't really have a chance of penetrating my armor or Citadel. Uh, to let you guys know who are interested in the Republic, the Republic Citadel does sit above the waterline, but it's very difficult to Citadel the Republic at a distance. She kind of has a very similar armor profile with the Citadel placement like the American battleships, but you have you have to get close enough to Citadel the uh, Republic or you get lucky Citadel the Republic at a fair distance. It's nothing compared to the Yamatos of course. So I am going to turn around and now start heading my way back. Now one common thing about the French battleships is their ability to be fast because they're equipped with the, um, what's it called, the engine boost. In the case of the Republic, she's, she's pretty slow. Uh, I guess I can't really expect much because it's tier 10. Tier 10 battleships are usually slow, but even with the engine boost, you, you don't really feel that much of a difference. For me, the, the biggest difference for engine boost is really the Reishalu. The Reishalu is the only worthy battleship to have that effective engine boost where I feel like it's very impactful. In the Republic, in the Alsace, I don't really feel impactful with the engine boost, aside from fooling the enemies who think that I'm going full steam ahead when really I'm just stopped. So enemy Minotaur showing broadside, going to fire of course. And let's see what's going to happen. Of course the uh, midway planes get shredded by these cruisers. Nothing. Yeah. Minotaur managed to dodge that one. I think she turned to the starboard side, so she kind of wiggled. She didn't tof turn fully broadside. Uh, when the last half spot, it looks like she's going to turn broadside, but she actually turned in, I believe, which is why she was able to dodge those shells, unless it got really bad luck on that salvo. Or poorly aimed. So again, Massachusetts appeared, and I fired my front guns, and she appears again. So I'm trying to decide what to do. Should I rotate my rear guns to the Massachusetts or stay the other way around? Because I was trying to figure out how I'm going to approach the situation. Broadside to the Kronstadt and Minotaur or broadside to the uh, Massachusetts. Now Massachusetts is still showing broadside. For whatever reason, she completely ignores me. Which is part of the reason why I was able to do a lot of damage. Honestly, the only way you're going to get these massive damage games is just punishing people and I just so happen to get lucky with people who don't care about my Republic. I think this is an NA thing, people just don't think the Republic is strong, but she certainly is deadly. Got my rear guns to rotate, and now it's time to paddle this Massachusetts. Kronstadt and Minotaur are taking damage from the Wusta. Still not getting the, uh, the Citadel I want, but I believe the next salvo shall be the salvo that will end the uh, captain aboard that Massachusetts. Who still takes out the Kronstadt? I fire, and it looks like it's yeah, that's that's gonna be goner. That's a goner for the uh, Massachusetts. We are allowed. We are pretty much left with the Minotaur. So aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time on World of Warships.